Well, with the cold season coming up, um, I thought it might be interesting to show you guys how I heat my garage. And up front, I would like to talk about why I don't simply use the baseboard heaters that are already installed in the garage, which would be a fair question. Um, well, the reason for that is the cost. Um, baseboard heaters in general, they take a ton of electricity. And unfortunately, as convenient and useful e electricity is, one of the worst things you can do with it is uh, converting it into heat energy. So uh, it's a pretty f big garage and I literally would pay hundreds of dollars to, per month to heat that space. Um, now you might wonder, why don't you just install a wood stove? Would be another good question. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, there's a catch to that one too. Um, the next fire station is pretty far away from here. Um, basically, our area is not covered um, by them. So now the insurance wants a ton of money because they say, well, uh, we take a big risk by insuring your house. Um, and besides that, installing a wood stove properly um, can be quite costly too. And considering that we might move on in the future and not going to stay on this property here, um, that wasn't really an option um, for us. So that's why I built this thing here. Now this system works with three major components. One would be the wood stove itself that I made out of scrap metal. Second would be an old car radiator. Um, this one is from a Toyota Sienna that I took apart a couple years ago. And third would be a, um, a pump. In this case, I'm using a cheap sump pump. Um, all of those components are connected with piping. And the way it works is the pump is pumping cold coolant towards the wood stove where it gets heated up. From there, it goes to the radiator. Um, and a big fan behind the radiator is extracting the heat and pushing it right into my garage. And then cold coolant returns to the pump. Now let's take a step back and look at those components individually. I don't have any footage of how I made this wood stove, but uh, there's nothing too special about it. I bought a steel drum at the scrapyard, I welded up this door. The door frame actually bolts on, that way I can replace the drum if I have to in the future. Um, in comparison to an actual wood stove, those drums are pretty thin walled, so there's potential to burn through in a couple years. I welded on some legs and the steel ring to accept 6 inch stovepipe. Now, if you want to save yourself some work, uh, you can buy a barrel stove kit. Uh, the only thing you have to do there is cut out the openings for the door and the uh, stovepipe, bolt on every part, and you're ready to go. I wanted to build this as cheap as possible and use up what I had, so I was willing to spend the time on it. As you can see, I built a very basic wooden frame that I covered with Greenos plastic. I just wanted to keep the wood stove out of the elements. And I also wanted to have some dry firewood close by. I guess it's time to talk about this thing now. Now, every project I do usually starts somewhere in the internet and uh, during my research for this one here, I stumbled across that picture. And if I understood the story right here, um, this picture was made to settle an argument. Um, basically, two guys were arguing over the where the best spot is to aim a, a fan at um, on a wood stove to circulate air. Now, one guy said, um, of course, the wood stove itself would be the hottest part so you have to aim it towards the wood stove. Now the other guy was convinced that the first part of stovepipe was the um, hottest section and you should aim your fan towards that. And so to settle this um, they took a thermal infrared image um, and to my surprise it's actually the first section of uh, stovepipe according to this picture that is the hottest part. Now with that information in mind, I decided now to wrap my copper pipe around the first section of stovepipe to harvest the heat from right where it's the hottest. Now you might think, hang on, why not putting a coil right in the stove or even better on the inside rather than on the outside of the stovepipe? And I guess you could, but I watched a couple of videos where guys built a similar system to heat a pool and a couple of them mentioned how creosote starts to build up on the pipes and decreases the efficiency. So um, I don't feel like uh, coming back and scrubbing pipes, so I decided to position them on the outside to avoid direct contact with the flames and the smoke. Now once that was done, I thought I could increase the efficiency even further if I insulate the coil, so that's what I'm doing here.
Now this is how it looks like when installed. I positioned the damper right above it to contain the heat in the first section. You probably noticed that I have copper pipe wrapped around the stove as well. Um, that wasn't my plan originally. On my first test I felt like the coolant uh, didn't get hot enough and I thought some pipe wrapped around the stove body would preheat the coolant. That actually worked well. Um, the only problem was now that I had um, soldered connection points close to the stove wall, um, which then actually became hot enough to melt the connection. So I had to clamp those fire bricks in between as insulators. I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty ugly, but it works. Now, since it would be insanely expensive to run a copper pipe all the way to the garage, I decided to switch to a PEX pipe instead. I had some rich caps uh, from an old metal roof kicking around and I used them as a heat shield to protect the PEX pipe. I also insulated the PEX pipe. Um, again, I tried to build this as cheap as possible and that's why I used fiberglass insulation and tuck tape. This is not the best way to do this, but it was a leftover material from another project and it was just collecting dust in the garage, so it felt good to use it up and save some money. Now after messing around for a while with the radiator and some plumbing fittings, I was ready to hook everything up. I fed the PEX pipe and insulation through flexible drainage pipe and sealed it on both ends. And this is how it looks like tucked under my workbench. A cheap box fan from Walmart is really all it needs to cool down the radiator. Now here we got, uh, last but not least, the uh, one quarter horsepower utility pump. It's really nothing uh, special, but it was cheap and it works. Now there are two reasons why the pump is located out here. Um, one is that I couldn't find any good information online about how dangerous the fumes of the coolant are. And I really don't feel like breathing that in all day long. And the other reason is this is a really cheap sump pump, it's not really meant for hot water, so I try to tie it in on the coldest spot in the loop, which is right before it goes towards the wood stove. Now the big question here is how well does the system work? And after running it for almost a full winter, I can say it works pretty good. It does take about an hour to heat up the garage, which is not too bad considering the size of it. But there are certainly some drawbacks as well. One of them is the time and work you have to spend to get this all going. You have to be out here an hour before you even can start working in the garage just to start the fire. You have to have enough dry firewood prepared for the whole season. In general, I think you almost have to have access to free firewood or this whole thing doesn't make too much sense. Also, you have to be able to babysit the whole system. What I mean by that is, yeah, I'll give you an example. Uh, last year I thought it would be very smart to start a giant fire in here, uh, leave for a couple hours and come home to a nice cozy warm garage. Well, it turned out we had a power out in that time, the pump stopped working, now the whole system is overheating and pipes and fittings are bursting all over the place. And to fix them up at minus 30 degrees Celsius outside is not a lot of fun. So that's for sure something to keep in mind. Also, the way I built this whole thing does look kind of redneck style, so there's for sure a lot of room for improvement. And if my plan would be to live here forever, I for sure would spend the time and money um, to make this all pretty. In my case, I'm quite willing to give up the fancy look for now for basically free heat. All right, I think I'm going to wrap up the video. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. And you might want to check out the other continents channel. There might be something interesting for you. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope I see you in the next video.